Greetings and good afternoon to all the viewers and listeners out there on the Primal 4K app. Welcome to Primal Sports Center. I'm your host, Dale. And I'm Kane the Schwab Watson. Uh, yes. Interesting lineup today, Dale. I mean, you know, we're well, always coming with something exciting and new. Today we'll go on. What are we starting off with? Well, first, let's tell the viewers, our guests, you know, we'll, we'll be having the, the CEO of Professional Football Jamaica Limited. Uh, he will join us in about five minutes' time. And later on down in the show, we'll be interviewing the big man himself from St. Lucia, the national table tennis head coach, Chris, Chris Wells, yeah, had a too. successful tournament in Guyana yeah. two weeks ago. So he, he will join us and discuss that achievement later on in the show. Yeah, they yeah, are doing big things down there. We like to see, you know, we're table tennis people and we want the English speaking Caribbean to step up. Before we talk about table tennis and English speaking Caribbean, just to intro, before we interview the CEO of the PFJL, I mean, we touch on some local football. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the highlight of local football in Jamaica is schoolboy football. Yes. But hopefully the Jamaican Premier League can step up and yeah. we we'll see what the CEO has in store for the Jamaica. Well, well, community itself, I mean, you know, and and you, you make a good point, club leagues, you know, go always touch on club league and table yeah. tennis and other sports, but football is a world sport. Yes, man. And we every weekend or during the week we tune in to watch football all over the world. Yeah, England, Italy, you name it. Yeah. Even if a Dutch match is coming on, yes. we probably watch it. So why not want to watch our own players too? tune into our own thing? So, yeah, I yes, mean, and and I think he will. You know, we know him well, and yeah. I, I think him, he wants the football. Oh, yes. He loves football, I yes. mean, I know him yes, personally, he, and I mean, he wants good for the sports. Yeah. You know, no better person to be in that position, and I'm sure he, he has a good corset around him to push this thing going forward, because they're making big moves, and I mean, he'll break that down for us during the interview. We won't spill all the beans, and he has better insight of what's going on, in-depth analysis of inroads of everything. But before that, Manning Cup, local football Manning Cup, Manning Cup quarterfinals round has started. We have two groups. Yes. Group A, KC, Mona, Charlie, St. George's. Mm -hmm. Group B, JC, Stats, Haley, Selassie, and Woolmers. And two teams come out of each group and go to the semifinals. You know? mm -hmm. So quarterfinal round kicks off today at 2 o'clock. The matches already start at halftime. We will see KC and Mona. We have that scoreline, no, no, sorry, Casey and Georges, the North Street Derby is going on right now. And Casey is up to love, one of the favorites and the defending champions. Mm -hmm. um, JC always in the mix and always a team to watch. So, me, I have Casey and Mona coming out to the group. Mona with Craig Butler. We interviewed Craig Butler a couple of weeks ago, and we know him a to be a controversial he's man. He's a kind, but definitely a man with passion yeah. and heart and love the sport and doing great things with Mona. We've never really heard Mona doing well I, in football and, and turn that program around. Okay. And Mona in the quarterfinals now, and one of the top seeds in Manning Cup to go through. And it's, to me, is I think to I, go through to the next yeah, round. Yeah, man. I think Craig Butler is a trendsetter. Mm -hmm. You know, um, even with Leon <coughs> Bailey getting Leon Bailey that big contract yeah. and uh, he, he, Phoenix he, Academy. I mean, e he exactly. said all his interview. I mean, people, if you miss any interviews, <laughs> I mean, we interview people from all likes. It's on YouTube. And I mean. Yeah, man, well, I, mean, I will even list the type of people interview. So, I mean, Primal was graced with his presence and with and to thank him again for doing an interview. And he expressed what he has been through and where he has at now. And then now we see the program where he's at more and doing big things. But hey, he came, in, he came into the came into Manning Cup just yeah. to prove a point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I think he's proven his point yeah, yeah. that. Maybe he is the best coach, according yeah, to him. Uh, yeah. I mean, you have to have that about <laughs> Of course, you. of mean, course. But, but I, I, I like, yeah. it, it reminds me a little bit of Levar Ball, the Ball brothers yeah, yeah, and yeah, the father yeah. and how he yeah. promote and push. But these guys believe in, in, yeah. in the system, you know, yeah. and yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a good thing, you know. Yeah. Mona is now on the map as a football school. Yeah. You have never heard of Mona. Yeah, <laughs> he can't count to St. George's with Never Bell. Okay, there, yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, Premier I hope team. they all play second field to, to Casey. And I mean, <laughs> Casey <laughs> off to a good start. In the next group, I, I have JC and Stats coming through. Yes. Stats has been a consistent side for the past four or five years going in. And I mean, a good defensive unit and... As that always. seems to be a weaker group with Haley Silas and Olmos, but I mean, hey, you make it this far, you have, must have some potency. But I tip JC and stats based on 
I mean, yeah, yeah um, the, the, talk, the the word out there is JCKC. Yeah. In terms of the and Mona, in and, the mix and Mona is, is is like the one who yeah. can upset everything yeah. there, but so, it's definitely JCKC. You want to top the group, and and hopefully probably get a weaker team, but all strong teams left. But I mean, just to make it to the semi final, you have to prove your point this round and of win course. some big matches. So. But you know we have to, we like to make predictions here on Primal and I have KC Mona, JC stats. So JC Mona in the semifinals, KC stats in the semifinals. Pretty pretty, pretty much pretty yeah. much the same. Pretty yeah, I mean, I like to agree with me on my predictions. Yeah, 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 with football. Have, have, have with football. Oh, you name it. Uh, yeah, yeah you, you, want, you want to predict NBA? Later yeah. on, we're going to that. Yeah, we'll we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah, later you know, I have England already, yeah. so yeah. Oh no, geez. Yeah, really. I have England for the World we, Cup. We do even want to get into that, but I think it's time now to introduce our guests. Yes, Owen Hill, the CEO of Professional Football Jamaica Limited. Uh, he should be with us any second now. Yes, we'll check, to check. Well. welcome to Primal Sports. Good afternoon or good night or good morning to the wherever people are in of the world. Primal, wherever you are in the world, because you know this yeah, yeah. is a global show. So, um, yeah, well, thank you for having me. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a yeah, pleasure like to be here. Uh, thanks for taking the time out because I mean you probably have a better schedule schedule even on the weekends based on your role now as the CEO of Professional Football Jamaica Limited. I got it right. Yeah, you definitely got yes. it right. PFJ, uh, Professional Football, football Jamaica. Really, all right. So tell us, define your role first as the CEO of the Jamaica Football Professional football Jamaica Limited. Professional Jamaica fo- Jamaica Limited. Well, we, we, yeah, we, tongue twister for me. Yeah, man, it, it is because we used to it that way yeah, around. We see that <laughs> way around but and, and that's the first shift that we need to make. That's one yeah. of the roles that I have. Um, yeah, for it to be a household name. Yeah, for it to be a household name. Um, most people know it as the Premier League, yeah. but more than just the Premier League. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, we are looking to build out some um, brands under what is considered a professional football Jamaica. Um, and the Premier League is just but one brand. So my role is the CEO, and ultimately that means that I am in charge of the day-to-day operations of the entity, um, primarily trying to ensure that there are sponsors that are on board, that there's alignment between what the brands represent and what the sponsors want, um, and to ensure that there's a certain level of development in the ecosystem that, that's sustainable. Okay, okay. So like big things, and I mean... <laughs> How, tell us your aim within I'll get year one, year two, from where it is now and the progress you hope to make in, in all of this venture. So, um, I mean, it's an interesting question you ask. What's my aim? My aim is really aligned to the strategy. So there's an overall strategy, um, a five-year strategy that would have been crafted. I know I like to say that I have received the button um, and in receiving the button, I'm now expected to run. Um, my leg of the race, ultimately. So um, we're in year three of the overall strategic direction. Um, And what we want to do is to ensure that the clubs that are a part of the JPL, which is the Premier League, um, 14 of them now, um, we ensure that there's viability, sustainable um, club models that are in place so that all these individual clubs have an opportunity to grow um, locally within the sport and regionally, um, through CONCACAF exposure and hopefully they'll be able to have some you know, good player sales coming through our revenue items. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I grew up with my uncles and I mean, elder people and they used to tell me about, they used to go to matches like Boys Town mm-hmm. and you name it. And I'm like... Yeah, Duncan Destroyers and yeah, Boys Town. And the passion they had when they used to turn up for these matches. For club football. And right now, most of them are abroad. How can you, because we watch Premier League out here, why not make it where they overseas can watch it as well? I mean, why not tune in and be like, All right, let's watch a Premier League match to make that brand? Because the aim is to get there, I should hope, where yeah, not only full up the stadium, but, TV rights but and, I mean, to yeah. push it, because my uncle be like, oh, you got to have a view and on it much already. I'm like, I can't tell the last, you're not going to cuss. <laughs> really no. So yeah, what, well, is it, what is it to, to pull us back? Because, I mean, to me, the biggest football in the island is schoolboy football. But we need to make that transition to be like, yo, Premier League match I go up on Sunday. Yo, deal, come in. Come and go down on it, on it yeah. and Tivoli. A big match. Yeah, well, as you mentioned, I mean, there are a number of things that would have um, 
been required for us to, to make that step. I mean, for us to, to go forward, we probably have to review what what went wrong uh, and why it went wrong. You know, where where did things kind of shifted from um, naturally people want to get up and go to the stadium to watch a local football game um, to now not being interested. A number of things that have happened. If you if you if you if you truly do an analysis, um, access to to international TV coverage for football games have expanded. Yeah. So now yeah. um, in the 21st century, as you mentioned earlier, you and Dale, um, you can now watch pretty much any league across the world on your handset. Yeah. Back then, you didn't have that option. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so your football um, aptitude would have been developed locally. You end up going to a game because it's happening in your community. You know a player. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a team that you support. Either um, it's close to work or you used to go to school close to the club that yeah. you know exists. Now, it's the flip where people have a more affinity towards international teams such as Juventus and um, Liverpool and Manchester United and the question is y- y- some people have never even been to these countries but yet still they love these teams so much so what we have to do is to not um, pour cold water on the fact that people support them what yeah. we have to do is to also ensure that we bring back some amount of enthusiasm to local football yeah definitely um, yeah because yeah. yeah, with people in Manchester United jerseys you're in a Liverpool yeah. jersey right. why not they're in a Harborview jersey, <laughs> or I wear my on it jersey, go to even yeah. a party. I'm like, oh, better on it. Yeah, yeah, so. I will, I will share my thing. I'm, I'm a Waganese football fan. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll say that straight. I'm not certain what I mean. What okay. do you mean? I, 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 I watch football based on the hype surrounding okay. football. Like, I, I, got back okay. into, I got back into Manning Cup, watching Manning Cup because of the man from judges you know you know my yeah, marshall marshall mm-hmm. it, 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 because of the marketing and the hype around marshall and chevron stewart and mesom mesom brought me back to watching manning cup again because i couldn't watch it before right it was, it was unwatchable for most of the the, the, the period <laughs> between 2000 and 2010. so these guys brought me back and it was really true klas they started hyping up the judges team and i started watching manning cup again but right. i'm saying for the Premier League, what about marketing the players, whether they're good or bad? How about mm-hmm. us creating some kind of buzz around the individual mm-hmm. talent within the Premier League to get a wagonist like me out, yeah. you know? <laughs> well, I mean, that's a part of the overall strategic direction, I must say. Um, one of our main goals is to ensure that the product ecosystem, because I keep yeah. mentioning the word ecosystem, it's not just one thing. Um, it's easy to make parallel comparisons, but it's it's... It's actually not a linear comparison. So schoolboy football, I mean, our affinity to our schools, whether it be local or, or regional, then that's a different thing, right? Um, so at the end of the day, I will say, hold on. At the end of the okay. day, yeah, are you hearing me now? Yeah, yeah man, yeah. just go ahead. Right. So at the end of the day, I will tell you that um, the approach that we have is to definitely market the, the, the teams and the individual stars within the teams. Now, you have 14 teams that spreads across the geography of Jamaica, um, but they have international reach. They have families, friends, um, former players who would have played with them at different levels across the world, people who just like Jamaica and want to watch the sport. So our overall marketing efforts are, are geared at are trying to improve what what is known as the the likability of the players, but the players have to also understand. I mean, it's it's rather difficult in our 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 socio demographic situation because um, a lot of the players are not fully professional. I mean, they have lives yeah, outside yeah. of playing football. Um, yeah. So it's a lot of development that needs to happen. So at the international level, um, you find that. Players sign on to clubs and there's an overall system that the club works through. Um, from day one, there's a big hype about the signing. Um, even in training, you get behind the scenes footage. All different types of, of, of paraphernalia are, are created and, and marketing is done to, to improve your likability for the sport. I mean, in Jamaica, I think we're making strides. Still not where we need to be, but at the end of the day, I think... Um, we're, we're, we're moving in the direction that 
that will renew the kind of passion and rivalry that once existed. And for those new football fans, um, for them to see locally that there's talent here um, and you need to support. Because if you don't get the support locally, then chances yeah. are it's going to be, it's, it's gonna be a, a, a very uphill battle trying to convince people to come and um, individually support the clubs because that's really what builds the sport. Yeah, because yeah. even so the players, I think the players should be advertised more. If I go to Arnett Gardens to watch a match, there should be a billboard of the Arnett Garden stars there. Or I go to Montego Bay, or all these clubs need to advertise players in and around. If I go to the, in the community to like build a brand, I, if I drive through a tree, I see a screen with a match coming up and you say Dwayne Atkinson representing his team and mm -hmm. another player representing their team and people get a household in and feel like, all right, there's a big match up there and even create, as I say, a rivalry or a buzz. People mm -hmm. put a name, who plays for Arnett Gardens now? I can't tell you who plays for Arnett Gardens. Yeah. I can tell you who plays for um, Sierra B side right now. <laughs> right, Much right, less. right. And uh, Sierra C. Um, and so and, and, my and own that has, own a, lot, that has yeah. a lot to do with us. Yeah, um, I need to market the players more, whether they're good or not. But if you are the prime time player for your team and people come out to watch, be like, oh, Dwayne Atkinson playing today, you know? Yeah. Dwayne Atkinson and, I mean, the man is great, great, great that buzz. The next thing I wanted to ask you about is um the stadiums, the development of the stadiums in terms of stands and, and all of that. Is that a part of your portfolio as well to to try to improve the, the quality of the, both the pitch and the stadium itself? Well, truthfully, the PFGL is not responsible for the development of stadium okay. um, because we are primarily commercially driven for the clubs. Okay. But ultimately... <laughs> I mean, it's an ecosystem, so you can't have one without the other. You can't be marketing players and clubs, and then when you show up in, 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 at game time, um, the pitch is bad because it makes bad for TV. Broadcast quality is weak, um, and as a result of that, the people watching is not going to be happy about the product overall. Um, so what we try to do is to align brands, meaning clubs, with potential partners. Um, a lot of the clubs require some upskilling, which is also something that we know, um, but it takes cash to care. So we have to kind of find avenues that will allow the clubs to help to improve the overall infrastructure. The JFF as the governing body is responsible for the development of um, football and the governance of football. And one of the development areas is actually infrastructure, field and, you know, bathrooms, you know, stadium facilities, that kind of thing. Um, and then what they'll have to do is to work with individual clubs. Now, the, the same clubs will also need strategies that they're, they're employing. I mean, it's very easy to, to look at international spaces and try to compare it, but then you have to dig deeper. You know, why is there um, a, a USL team with a, with a facility that um, can, you know, that can create an opportunity for a game to be played at eight, nine o'clock in the night because they have, you know, electricity that is run by solar panels. Um, why is it that there is even just a regular park that you can go in the, in the United States or Canada or wherever it is and you can play, but yet still in Jamaica, we have a challenge with, with executing games like that. Um, mm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult task, but if we're strategic enough, and by we, I'm saying the overall ecosystem, so... Um, it starts from the Ministry of, you know, Gender, Culture, Entertainment and Sport. Um, they have to create avenues where if a club wants to invest in its, its football facility, then they may get some duty-free imports. Um, that is really what you talk about when you say facilitation. Um, SDF as a, as, a, as a developmental tool, they'll help to, to foster, you know, good relationships because – I share an experience with you. Arnett Gardens, um, Tony Spalding Sports Complex is one of the, 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 the most used and known football stadium mm -hmm. in the country. And it's community-based. If you know where Tony Spalding is, um, mm -hmm. it's in the heart of the garrison, one of the, the more known garrisons, right? Um, but, but it took vision to build a stadium like that, first and foremost. Um, mm -hmm. Secondly, in the stadium, if you really look, um, there are some 
there are some VIP areas that are that are designated for specially invited guests and you know club officials, etc. But the seating in the VIP area are seats that would have been gifted to us from the 1996 Olympic Games. Yeah. So, so these are seats, solid enough seats, um, yeah. that would have withstood the, the test of time. This is from the 96 Olympic Games that were held in the USA. Now, that's yeah. the kind of partnership that I'm talking about. If it is that we are clear, um, yes, it might seem like a retrograde step in some instances, you know, Jamaicans, we have a kind of chip on our shoulder. I don't want to beg nobody nothing, especially if it's second-hand teams. But yeah. the truth of the matter is we are looking to develop our overall ecosystem. So if we need to build more stadium and we need more stadium with more seating and we can get a few seating from Qatar after the World Cup has ended, then that's a good strategy. Yeah. And I've gone yeah, as far as one. FIFA. I've gone as far as FIFA, but I'm mm-hmm. saying we have to look at different strategies. So, you know, we need to build an artificial turf. Then we probably need to be talking with clubs that that mm-hmm. consistently roll out artificial turfs um, and, and, and keep improving. So they may have a second grade turf that they would have used um, that they don't need anymore. We can use it here. Yeah. 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 yeah um, so those are the strategies that I'm saying we have to kind of look at to employ for the clubs um, so that they can build their overall brand um, so that the football can be better yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, Owen. Yeah, better for the viewers, better for the, them themselves. I mean, better overall quality. And I mean, and in terms of the cost factor as well, you know, it's, it's less on the pocket, you know. Yes. Yeah, so that, I, that's a great, 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 great strategy right, right there. Um, yeah, and that's just one of the many strategies that can be employed. I mean, we're talking about um, creating bilateral relationships with, with clubs that if you want your players to be exposed, um, you may just have a knowledge transfer. I get a few coaches. You you send me a few players. Um, yeah. and we have that transfer, you know. And at the start, you may not be able to, to recoup initially what you'd have invested in the player. But over a longer period, you will be better off, you know. Um, and those are the ways that we're trying to upskill the clubs um, to see football as a, as a business. You know, it's not just playing on the field. Playing on the field is really an output of many things. Um, yeah. And we're trying to really get that mindset into the sport. Um, the professional side of it is really not just on the field, it's off the field. Um, and we understand what sponsors want. We understand what the stakeholders want when you watch it. Because you're exposed um, on a weekly basis to high-quality football on your television, it's hard for you to step back down and watch it locally and feel good about it. Um, even when you go into the actual venues, it's, it's going to be difficult. But we have to build it brick by brick. And um, it's not going to happen over time. But if there is a strategy and we're working towards that, then hopefully we should be better off in five years. Time. Yeah, yes, yes, Owen Hill. Um, that's, a gr- that's a great one right there. Now, a step at a time, you know, block by br- block br- or brick, brick by brick. brick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, it's consist- consistency is the key as well and persistence. And I think you guys are, are doing a good job so far. And I, w- I hope that you keep it up, all right? Yeah. Yeah, we need, we need I, I, like I said, I mean, we need, we need, because my approach, and, and I think you had asked me earlier, my approach is to get it into every single hand that could possibly yeah. want it, right? Um, because when you create exclusivity, then it, it, it eliminates the, the global reach that you need to get. So we need programs like these, you know, where we're able to talk about what is happening and you spread the word um, because you have your own viewers and your listeners. Um, we need to have this in every single nook and cranny of the world where people know what is happening in, in, in our neck of the woods. And if you can find ways to invest or reinvest, then fine. Um, it's not going to happen over time. We're not going to get the big TV revenues that you watch and hear on the on the on on, on you know the international leagues because we just don't have that ecosystem as yet. So yeah. what we're trying to do is to get more people in the stands um, so that we can build overall gate receipts. We can also get some good um, revenue from merchandising because people will now have a greater affinity towards the clubs. Um, players can be sold, whether it be um, to the USL level or um, any other entry point that we have. I believe 
um, South America is a good entry point. Again, Central America is also a good entry point. Um, so those are things that we're trying to do. But as I say, it's an it's a, it's a ecosystem that needs building um, and it won't happen over time, but overnight rather. But um, consistency, as you mentioned, is, is going to be key and we keep pushing it. And like I said, I, I've gotten the button. I'm just running my leg of the race. Um, yeah. Hopefully a good split and then if and when I pass the button, yeah, yeah, yeah. If and when yeah, I pass the button, it's in a better position. Yeah, of course. And it over to bold to finish. Yeah, man, without a doubt. All right, thank you, Owen. We'll come to the end of this segment. Uh, thank you for coming on Primal Sports today. Again? Yeah. For having me. I mean, again, yeah, anytime. It's a pleasure. Yeah, and uh, to the listeners out there who are listening and anybody, help is needed. Anybody can help, whether it's going to the match, whether it's setting a link to anybody. I mean... We need to promote Jamaican football. Or even a donation. A lot of talent is there. Yeah. yeah even donations. I mean, give ideas or come on board. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's an IG page. I'm sure there's ways to voice or lend a helping hand. Yeah, man. yeah definitely. And, and we, we, we require help in different ways. Yes, it's easy to get money from. from or it's that, that's the easy thing to ask for, money. Um, but we know that the kind of constraints that we're working with. So. At the end of the day, the support is necessary. I mean, as you say, come to the games, watch them on TV, support, buy a jersey, um, create some banter between yourself and, and, and Dale about which team you support, know the players. Yeah, yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, that is what will build it. You know, people in St. Lucia like Chris will yeah. want to send over a couple of his players um, yeah, because, yeah. because we have one of two professional leagues in the Caribbean. We yeah. have a couple of St. Lucians in our leagues right now. So that's yeah, the yeah. kind of thing that we're talking about, building it out yeah. and, and hopefully people get the hang of it. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Owen Hill. Come on. Thanks for taking the time out. And, you know, it go already. Big up. Yeah, man. the CEO of Professional Football Jamaica Limited, Owen Hill. Thank you very much. Yeah. No. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, good. we need to brand Jamaican football more. And I mean, yeah, the talent is here and... I mean, you have to support New your own brand. Yeah, you have to New support minds. your own brand. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, they're on the right path. And hopefully, as I said, don't have overnight, but in five years' time, yeah. hey, we want step. to finish Primal and say, oh, we have to catch that five o'clock match down by, whether it's Tony's Balling Complex, whether it's a new complex. But I mean, exactly. Yeah. No, we'd, we'd like to welcome to Primal Sports the big man himself, the national head coach of St. Lucia. Uh, created, um, well, some upsets there in Guyana at the pre cadet Championship, coming away with five gold medals. Uh, I think this is the first in history I'm um, St. Lucia you has achieved this You this spill greatness. all the beans, you're going to make him, you know? <laughs> yes, but let's welcome Chris down. Wells, national coach, table tennis coach of St. Lucia. Welcome to Primal Sports. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Mm. Thank you, Yeah, Dale. Man. yeah well, everything good on your side? Everything good. There's a little rainy weather, but everything is good. All right, all right. So they'll just list out some things, but we want to hear from you. What went down and, I mean, what went wrong, went went good? I mean, it sounds like a lot of good, but yeah. Okay, well, basically we brought a a contingent to Guyana. Our athletes had been, well, you know, the pandemic, it messed with everyone around the world. However, our athletes, a few of them came trickling back, we lost a few athletes during the pandemic. However, with a core of players we had, we had a few players who were constantly training. Like I, I coached them from, from scratch, from grassroots. I brought them into the sport and continue working with them. Sometimes on one-on-one, sometimes in group, in group settings. However, in our training sessions, we recover all the diseases from the technique, tactics, we insert a lot of mental during the training. We don't wait when competition gets there because it's already too late. Yeah. And, yeah. and so since they were well, I would say they were well prepared, going into Guyana, we were not sure which teams would show up. And since we had not gone to this tournament for a few years now, we were not sure what the standard would be. So normally whenever we go to tournaments like that, you always cater for like, like the Dom Reps and the Puerto Rico. So you, you yeah. want to prepare, your athletes. You, you have to prepare yeah. your athletes based on the traditional islands that, that, that normally speed fire. So you want to prepare them to, you know, to be able to handle whatever they bring. So yes. they were well prepared, but I still was, 
wasn't sure what the standard would be like since I had nothing to measure them against or who to measure them against. So we came into the tournament and, you know, normal, unseeded and stuff, and, and, the, and, and the guys played. And my first thing was to make sure that the, the athletes were comfortable as more than half the team. That was their first trip ever with another aircraft. So I got to experience, you know, just being around them and going over the, going over the city and they seen buildings and they, oh my goodness, I know this. Just been around, yeah. and I remember when it was my first time. You know, you know, we were just vibing and having a having a good time. So, for me, my style of coaching is more or less like, just do what I ask you to. Know? We'll make time yeah. to have fun. You know, I don't want to come down hard like how the Chinese would normally do. I am yeah. very flexible in, in how we we operate. So there are times we'll have fun. There are times I might I'll, I'll allow the athletes to rest. That times I might decide, okay, do something. We we just go to the beach and run today. We just gonna just do something. We just change it up. Yeah. And yeah. so when we got to Guyana, we were settled down. You know, all the athletes were in my room and we were talking. And for me, like, the first thing is to get everybody relaxed and to get them with the right mindset and the right team approach. So the redeem team just came out. You know, so <laughs> so I played the redeem team for them. You know, and and they watched the redeem team. And then afterwards, well. A few of them fell asleep. That before our first first match against Trinidad, which was the number one seeded team. But those who didn't sleep, the, the guy who didn't sleep, he played well. He was the youngest player we had there. He's under eleven. He didn't sleep. Anxious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember. I remember going to tours and can't sleep. He's you know? anxious to play when I was yeah. a junior. Yeah. So he went through things about like like the mindset and what it takes to represent your country and you know the respect and the, the type of national pride. You know, you you want to. Go out there and, and leave everything out, yeah. you know. So, you know, so they went out and they worked hard, and we, we, we barely beat Trinidad. But a win is a win, you know. You have to fight for some, some things, and when you fight hard early, it, it sometimes it creates an easier pathway because you 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 that close, mm-hmm. so you don't want it to mess up again. So they they played with uh, a greater zeal, and what actually helped us is that after we had topped the group, you know, but we have athletes where from disadvantaged homes like i have a high risk youth you know and then you know, he had things real hard you know he's kind of on his own most of the time that was our under 13 player the one who won the singles he was always on his own and you know he's a, a like they see him as a, a trouble like a troublemaker a high risk youth one of those yeah. if he's in a spot oh he, the gangs will follow him trouble. he'll be one of those in the forefront in the gangs because he's he's that brave and so just channel his energy in the spot but his yeah. mom, his mom actually helped us. His mom helped me motivate him. Because yeah. when we yeah. talk the group, she, she, she doesn't really understand much about table tennis. But we yeah. are just our group. And then, you know, we, I, I sent something out to some media persons. And then she thought we had won the tournament. So she started putting on, on her status that, oh, congratulations, you know, you said you were coming over for gold and you came over for gold. And no, 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 no. <laughs> and we yeah. haven't even played quarterfinals or semifinals yet. Yeah. So it so happened that when we got to semifinals, we were able to win easily, like 3 0. But when we got to finals, that same player had the deciding match. And he had been more of the shakier players we had. One was stable, he was winning all his games, and one was losing and winning. So then I said, How do I, I motivate him? So I had to use all what he's been through in life. When people say he's a failure, yeah. he cannot do this, he cannot do that. So I had to use that type of talk to motivate him. You no, know, and I told him, and, 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 do, and, and, and do you want to make him proud? He started saying, yes, yes, he did for his mother. And so you have to do for the, I tell him, I did him almost like the bobsled movie, Jabi Gava bobsled yeah. thing, where they'll tell the guy, who are you? No, 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 I did, I did something like that. <laughs> we film it, though. I say, you have to do for your mother. And then, yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. And <laughs> tears started coming from his eyes. And he gave me a high five and he went on the other table. And every time he won a point, you'll see him look at me. From Peter, yeah. So he yeah, actually yeah, that was, was a the, big, big match doing on. That was a big, a big match. match. And he played, a lot of he played a lot of shots, like everything was just on point. And he yeah. won free zero. They decided the match free zero. And when he finished, yeah. he just collapsed. Ah. <laughs> yeah. This is the first time Senator ever got a gold medal at the Caribbean level, at any level. At yeah. any level, that is any so current. Yeah. Yes. Um, any OECS island ever got a gold medal? Yeah. You know? yeah. So you but guys got a parade when you came when you went back home. <laughs> <laughs> you got a parade. 
Well, we I mean, were welcomed parents by, must be... by the government officials. They brought us through the, the VIP lounge, and you know they had what? some government officials, you know, speak to them and a little motivation, you know. But the, the kids were very excited about that, you know. First time traveling, first time coming back, so much trophies with them, and you know, it's, it's just just exciting. And for me, like just being a coach and be able to give them that experience that hey. Now yes, you've yes. done that. Now you have done these things for the country. I think it's an experience I will never forget. You know, it's, it's the first time traveling, the first time for everything. You know, mm-hmm. a wonderful experience. No, I want you to tell me a little about that female player because I think she's a very promising young star. You know. Oh well, well, um, Chantal Charles. Well, she is serious. She is serious grassroots. Her mom used to be a, a decent athlete, but never got the opportunity as a runner. Now, her upbringing has been very tough. Like, from the time she's seven years, she has to be carrying water up many stairs from a river, etc., to go out of home. She has no running water, no electricity. So she, she raised in the real tough, tough life, having to wash clothes in the river on stone. So she raised, she raised tough. She can do 30 push-ups in 25 seconds. Yeah. So she raised it that type of, you know, she, she believes she's stronger than everybody else. You know, she's, she's tough. Well, when I have the 16 and a lot 17... Of people, oh, Chris, a lot of people would say tough, but I, I would say she was raised, raised um, in a natural way. You know, well, you yes. can put, it, you can put yeah. it in that way as well. That's why she's so naturally talented. You know, I think yeah. she's yeah. a superstar in the making. You know, she, yeah. she was raised in a natural way. Yeah. yeah. She's, <laughs> a very, she's a very humble young, young lady. She, 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 yeah. she barely speaks, but... Just being around her, you could see that that's a, she's a very confident <laughs> young lady. She was the shortest player in the tournament also. Yes. And, and early in the tournament, I mean, she went to a training camp in Dominican Republic. And then when she came back, coming to that tournament, she, I, she, she put braids. I said, well, I know she put braids. But during the tournament, I realized a number of athletes were asking, is this a boy or is it a girl? When they saw how she was knocking, hitting the ball hard, power on her. Back and back and forth, back and forth, playing powerful shots. Almost the power of, of the average guys, her age group. I say it's a girl. Okay. So then I mean it was a little tough for her, but we did not yeah. come in from we did not come in for a female team. So you find all the tennis matches playing and you don't get to play. And, and we know how that goes as table tennis players. You know, when you when you when you have to get to see the teams and you don't get to play, and you have to go and play the singles, it's it's always a little more difficult. To adjust, yes. you know. So, so she had to go through the these these jitters, but she's but she's a tough cookie because we yeah. we played the mixed doubles. We didn't get a result that we actually liked, and then so her her it last was week, actually a mixed pair um mix, um doubles, right? You played doubles as well with um Trinidad. With a, yeah, with a, a Trinidad, oh, yeah. And I, you know, they they got the strongest team one time after the first match, so they went all games, but. It was too much work for her to carry her partner, although they played extremely well together for players yeah. who never played with each other. You know, so so that was her only hope. And she played against one of your players. <laughs> the, the girl was a little bigger. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I guess uh, that was in quarterfinals. And she had won the first game. Your, your, your girl had won the first game. And the next game, your girl had something like 7-3. You know, and so I, I, I told her. She was, told her, she was, she was down in the second set as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. So I, so I, I told her, hey, this is it. This is what we have prepared for, and this is what winning is all about. You are tough. You are tough, and that's what you made for. And I knew you could handle it. You know, so I, I will let her know what, what I know she can do. So I said, her, don't worry about. You know, don't worry about. I didn't mention errors. I don't like to use negative words when I'm coaching. I said, yeah. let's focus on where you want to place the ball. Attack the ball there. Use this serve. You know, and I, I tell her what to serve, whatever. And then she looks into my eyes, and I see it like as if like, like she have she like she, she felt I could have seen that she has no choice. Like uh, a cut against the wall. Like okay, I have no choice. But <laughs> well, if she has me two zero, I mean that's that's a lot of pressure. So yeah. then she came out, she juiced, and she won the game. So that's you know it's one all. It's like a relief. Okay, now let me take more risk now. And, and, and show how fearless I can be for attacking shots, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and then she was able to open up and win the other games. And in the semi-final match, she played against another Jamaican, during the Pimple. Yes. And then at, at that point, well, we do a lot of mindfulness training, psychological things before the match. Sometimes I'll, I'll get them out of everywhere all the athletes are, 
and bring them in a place, and I'll play some mindfulness exercises where they get relaxed. And so at least they could go to the match with a sense of confidence, but relax at the same time, not too anxious. So she went to the semi final match, real relaxed. I, and I could have seen, I didn't have to tell her anything much while I played, because even when she was down, I could have seen, like, as if she felt she was in control of the match, and I could have seen it. She would yes. do certain things. She knew how to win her points. She was able to execute every time she really wanted to. And so she was able to win. And then All when right. she got, Yeah? Okay, Chris. So we're running out of time here. But before we go, I want, tell, us a, tell us about the structure um, of table tennis within St. Lucia. Well, basically, we, we followed a long-term athlete development plan where we have a plan for the, the athletes from the time about six, seven years all the way up. So I did a course in, in Canada in, in 2015, and my project was to, to develop a plan for any age group. So I developed a plan for the under 13 category, and the Andrew Cauldron is a product of, of that plan, and it took him about three years to be the best player in Russia. Under that, by the time he was 14 years, he went to Barbados, he won the under 21 tournament, which Tyrese played in. Yeah. A, a different player defeated Tyrese, but he defeated Tyrese in the finals. So with that long-term after the level, we, we develop the players, and it's not a, a three months before tournament. You know, they, it's, a, it's an ongoing thing where they get trained mentally, physically, tactically. You know, and so we try to take care of all the headaches around them, okay. providing that they, they commit to giving at least 10 hours a week in training. So all the athletes mm-hmm. who, score, who came to the tournament, they give a minimum of 10 hours. If you don't train 10 hours a week, you cannot be a national team. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, oh, that's, yes, good. Yes, that's good. Yes. Yeah, that, 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 that's good. That's a good That makes sense. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's a good standard to set, man. Yeah. So everybody knows a minimum. What about, what about the overall numbers of, uh, in terms of clubs and the, the number of players that you have there? To be honest, in solution in terms of clubs, we don't really have a club structure, but we mm-hmm. have the, the school tournament where we have most of the schools, like we have, it's going on right now. We have about, we have 28 high schools in St. Lucia, and we have 24 high schools taking part in the tournament out of 28. Wow. Yeah. Then, we, we have about 5,000 in Jamaica, and maybe about 10 <laughs> participating in table tennis. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's, that's a good percentage. Yeah. yeah. That's, so a, that's a very good percentage, actually. Most of the schools. And at the primary school level, the island is separated into eight districts. Mm-hmm. Like how you will have like, you know, different places, Portmore, we have eight districts. Yeah. And every district runs their own tournaments, table tennis tournaments. And then each district make their own team, have to have their district team. So the best four boys and four girls in each district come out and then we put them in two groups. And we have a island-wide, the best of the districts at the primary school level as oh, well. Yeah, that, 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 that will brew talent for sure. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a promising structure. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's very promising and um, a good feeding program, feed the program. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It is, yeah, good structure, and I guess it goes all the way up. And I like where you said you have to train at least ten hours a week to be on the national yeah, team. Yeah. So yeah, I mean. yeah. So we we have it set in stone. So once we have let's say a four or five month period before any major event. 10 hours a week is minimum. If you cannot minimum. put 10 hours, you, you can be the number one in St. Lucia, you're not mm-hmm. going to go. Yeah, so yeah. after like DeAndre, there was a time when DeAndre would train like 25 to 30 hours a week, yeah. you know, and stuff, you know, so, so that's just... All right. Yeah, well, congratulations like again, Chris, um, on your achievement in Guyana, the pre-cadet championship in Guyana. Congratulations, and uh, hope you keep up the good work, and yeah, thanks for coming on Primal. Yeah. Well, I have to thank you all for inviting me here to, mm. to share with you. And I mean, one thing I like that you touch on, the connection you have with you and the kids, to me, that yeah. is the most important thing. And you are like, a, not just a coach to them. And I can, I wasn't there, but I can envision it and I can see where you are connected to kids and the kids connected to you. And that yeah. is a recipe for success. And makes that's why I'm saying congrats from, yeah, it man, makes a big difference because the hours you put in and the time you put in, you reap your rewards, yeah. whether you win or lose. And yeah. as I said, we play all we play the game to win, but you have to win and you have to lose. But the connection you have with them, and I'm sure what you teach them is a lifetime mm-hmm. lesson. So yeah, this, man. no matter where they go from here, yeah. keep up the good work. And I mean, the talent will rise to the top. So and keep it posted, all right? 
Yeah, give me both. I'll give you. talk about LeBron James and MJ, but we'll save that <laughs> yeah. for another day. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, Chris. All right, that was All a right, national you, Chris. national yeah. head coach, table tennis head coach of St. Lucia, yeah. Chris Wells. You know, I mean, interesting like, story. He's a, he's a motivator. I can tell you that. You know, yeah. and, and it's and it's. Yeah. For the kids, you know, yeah, we know him, love, we know he loves the sport, yeah, and I had to see him giving back to the sport now where he's now a coach because he was a former player, former playing player. for many years, and now a coach. And I mean, the yeah. passion every, every most um primal episodes we talk about the passion in sports, and mm. once you put the passion and the time, I mean, the reward is just yeah. even better when you win. But you have to go out there and you put in the train, you put in the hard work. I mean. Yes. It's a wonderful feeling. So, yes, great job. congrats to them again. Great and, um, job. Great yeah, man. Job. Well done, St. Lucia. Uh, Population yeah. of 180,000 and beating up some bigger countries. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. And, Jamaica, and, and, and we, we, we probably have 180,000 people it, in Portmore. Yeah, yeah, more. Exactly. Or over Port Royal. More, yeah. And, and what, what, yeah. Is, what is amazing is the amount of schools that, that, that participate. It's almost it's 90%. Yeah, it's 90%. Com- and then from as, and as high school level, primary level. You, primary you guys have seen the postings on Facebook? A lot of young kids playing table tennis of in course, St. Lucia. Of course, yeah, so of there's an enthusiasm there that um, mm-hmm. I'm impressed. Yeah, yes. yeah I mean, mm-hmm. Well, well no, everybody know what time is it. It's what? time for sports commentary. Yeah, with Peter. the controversial boss, don't leave out that part. <laughs> exactly. Well, this week is not very controversial, just regular old sports commentary. <laughs> so, um, you know, I've been answering questions f- f- on, on the chat room every now and then. And people, please go on the chat room on Primal 4K and, and, and bring up your... Let's talk about sports. So um, one question I had to feel the other day was, how do we decide on shirts? Why are two guys at the table in purple and, and one guy in blue? It might have something to do with the high school we attended. <laughs> that, that's the only answer I'll give you. But sometimes they, we, you know, we do achieve uniformity. Um, I apologize for a lack of uniformity. here. Somebody never got the menu. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, have you guys been watching lawn tennis lately? I mean, there's a guy called Felix Ogier Alizimi or Alizim who has been um, racking up a string of tournament wins. So I've been watching it quietly like a dark horse kind of situation where he won three tournaments on the trot. And this week in Paris, he got to the semifinals. And then um, our guy, um, what's his name? Number one in the world. Um, uh, Medvedev? No, number one in the world. No, um, got injured. Oh, Alcaraz. Alcaraz got injured and pulled out. So I thought Alice would have had four tournaments in a row. But unfortunately, he lost at the semi-final stage. So now the big finals for Paris going to be Djokovic, who you can't seem to count out. He's going to play against Rune in the finals of Paris. My money's on Djokovic. Let's see what happens, eh? For the first time. For the first time, my money's on, on Djokovic. Um, there's a lot of debate going on around the shelling of World Cup now because there's a lot of injuries. And when you have a late-season World Cup, um, normally World Cup takes place earlier in the season. Um, but for some reason, when they decided to give Qatar, they, they probably considered the weather conditions there and so on, but didn't give much consideration to the state of the players now. And a lot of teams are complaining um, that their players are injured and they think that FIFA gave no proper consideration to the welfare of the players in shelling the World Cup. And I'd like to know what, what, what people think, eh? Um, but that's, I'm going to go back to football in a minute, but um, LA Lakers broke the losing streak. And I think I had to, to bring that up because um, LeBron stepped up. I really see a big difference in LA game when LeBron is off the bench versus on the bench. I mean, it's ridiculous. Every time LeBron goes down the score, just goes the other direction. <laughs> and then he comes off the bench and then they run a, a string of 15-16. I don't like watching basketball nowadays. Um, there's too much three-point shooting. And um, I had suggested a rule to fix that. And the NBA, when they fix that, it's going to make basketball more interesting. I think that penetration basketball is far more interesting than this three-point shooting, e- easy turnover basketball. You know, it's not, it doesn't, not pleasing to my eye at all. Um, cricket. West Indies, with the recent embarrassment, is descending into the Hunger Games. We are turning against each other. Brother fighting against brother. Nation cussing against nation. Sir Andy Roberts made a statement that Jimmy Adams, two decent gentlemen, is on a joy ride. He's on a free ride, <laughs> living off the public purse, flying all over the place. Not easy director of cricket, you know. Not doing a, a thing for cricket at all. And it's not good. It's not good, eh? 
Stick on cricket one more second. Did you guys observe, observe the controversy in India in that match against Bangladesh? India was in danger of losing. Um, India bat first, made about 160 something runs. Um, and then um, Bangladesh started batting at a good opening partnership and rain fell. Now, under the dock work, Lewis system, Bangladesh would have won the match. But then you know you don't want India out of the semifinals. There's a large TV audience. There's a large audience of people who will tune out if India is not there. I suspect there's a conspiracy because the umpires decided the rain stopped for just a brief second, you know, and the man then bring Bangladesh out to go finish the innings because Bangladesh would have won. They were 17 points ahead of the serpent, you know, the duck word yeah. still and, and thing. And then they brought Bangladesh out and people were, the field was not even dry. The ball was sliding around, players were slipping and it allowed India to win. I smell a rat. I smell a rat. I didn't like how it looked. Didn't like how it looked. But you know, sports commentary is in a way. Call it how it is. Now, um, Paul Scholes was watching a football match with Manchester United. And my baller, Anthony, did a spin. 720 degrees. Collect the ball and spin and spin and spin. And it was a nice piece of ball. Kicked off the ball and the internet went crazy. Paul Scholes says that the showboating have to stop. I don't like it. But then I wrote a little passage about it, you know, because... Um, I, I wrote it on my uh, social thing. I've seen Mikhail Baryshnikov, that's the dancer, perform the triple axel in Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake at the Bolshoi Opera Hall. And it did not match the beauty and the execution of Anthony's twin spin with the football. It upset the rhythm of the opposition and created an opening for his partner to almost score. If I did score, it would have been the goal of the century. You saw the spin, Ken? Yeah. It was a great spin. If he could just keep spinning, I'd watch the game the whole time. Because um, it, it really was confusing to, to, to watch him uh, 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 perform that act. Second to last thing, table tennis. Um, Wang Chu Shin, the coming man, won the WTT Cup final in Xinjiang, beating Harimoto. Harimoto is playing the table tennis of his life. But Wang Chu Shin was entrusted to bring China the victory against Japan recently, to play strong over Ma Long, came good and beat Harimoto and, and, and set things right. And I'm telling you guys, this guy is going to be the next man after Fan Jindong. Wan Shu Ching is easily going to be the... He's now going to be world number three. But guess what? He's playing the Chinese National Championships this weekend. And I don't know if he's going to win it, you know. The Chinese National Championships is actually the hardest tournament to win on the planet. Harder than the World Championship. Harder than the Olympic Games. Harder than any pro tour. Is that Chinese National Championships. I've been watching a couple of the matches and it's difficult. The Chinese have such a high standard. And finally, top 10 women in sports were named. Number one, Naomi Osaka. Number one earning woman in sports, Naomi Osaka. Number two, Serena Williams. Number three, Emma Raducanu. None of them play a sport. <laughs> Why are the number three earning men and women in, women in sport? Um, not, 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 they're not winning anything. They're not playing anything. And yet they are the number one, two, three. What do you think would happen to Mr. Djokovic if he stopped playing tennis? He would disappear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? Ne um, Naomi earns two million playing tennis and 55 million muggling. And I say M-O-G-G-L-I-N-G. <laughs> Serena earned 45 million muggling and only one million playing lawn tennis. Emma Raducanu, worse. Not going to even tell you how it goes. It's, it's unfair. It's unfair. Women athletes should be doing some sports. Why is, why is it that a man? Do you think if, if, if Messi stopped playing, he could make that money of football? He could not. Same thing with um, Cristiano Ronaldo. But women get away with the uneven playing field. It needs to be thing there. Um, that sports commentary. What say you? <laughs> Oh, I was waiting for the controversy, I tell you. I was wondering if it was going to go on Spice. That's a lot of Spice, in, you know. Oh, but spice. I guess if it was Shensi, I would have heard something from the controversy boss. But <laughs> not, none, of, none of that today. But yeah, touchy topics. Yeah, but it, it, I mean. Interesting. Well, you know, women. Well, Peter should have give us who yeah. earns the most as male. Yeah. You see, not give us who earns the, the most. But I'm sure he'll be back soon. <laughs> Do you remember the phone lines are open? 1876. Five five two seven four zero six, and that's via WhatsApp only. One eight seven six five five two seven four zero six. Yeah. 
we we know how this thing already came. <laughs> they don't. You know, we, women, women want equal pay. Sh- 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 Sharapo- what's her name? Sh- Sharapova. Sharapova. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Karnakova. Yes, Anna Karnakova. Anna Karnakova. And Maria Sharapova yeah. too. Well, Anna made a lot. Didn't win anything. Mm. <laughs> and she made a whack of the tennis. Maria won two, uh, I think, two uh, grand uh, it, It's about, you know, when it comes down to the female, the females, it's about, it's about beauty and, and appeal and all of that. You can't we, tell we, them we, that. You can't tell them the that. The males is different. You have to perform. Yeah, it's yeah. about performance for the males. But with the women, it's not so much about the performance. It's so much about how you look and how you carry yourself. You yeah. know? So it is what it is. No, I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, but <coughs> hey. But I, I hear Peter. I, I want to ask Peter a question. Do you think a left hander table tennis? Mm. Uh, touch on one two chin right there. You really think a left hander can really become the best in the world? I mean, winning. I mean, the, the dominance like a, a Marlang over a four five year period. Why not? That, you think they're they're at a disadvantage being left handed? I, I I I think that some yeah because Why I've not? never seen it happen before. I mean, Yujing was on top of the world. For no, a while, come on. I mean, Olympic champ. I mean, the dominance, like being dominant, like a Wan Lee King, mm. like a Marlong, like a Jan Ji King. Mm. We've never seen a left hander to the time, to history, never. That's the end. One hit wonder. I mean, why? Why? Why do you think that is? I'm just wondering. You know, it's, it's something well, I just, well, I just well, turn it out there. I don't know if. If, if they're at a disadvantage, I just kind of turn it out there. Yeah, you, you, know? you, you definitely that, have more right handers than left handers. Point, yeah. So, yeah. I mean. I've never seen it. It's interesting. Let me see if this young kid can okay. really live up to the hype. So you're, you're saying. <laughs> I don't think it's possible because for a left hander to be dominant. I, don't, I just don't yeah. think it's possible. I never really looked on the dynamism, dynamism of it uh, yeah. to say a left hander. But never really. We really have to like really that. dig deep into mm. it and say. Yeah, and most of the top top players, if you name the greatest of the greats, mm. probably all of them right handed. Exactly. I'm I'm thinking I'm perusing right now and all of them right handed. <laughs> and the upcoming ones, I guess one chicken is left hand. Yeah. Chinese type The last Injo. world champion was um mm. the last world champion was Gatien mm. from nineteen ninety three. Mm. 1993. Yeah, and that, Went to Olympic finals 1992 as well. Last the one, no? 94. 92. 92, 92 yeah, Olympics, 92, Barcelona. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. Um, 93 World Championship in Stuttgart. Uh, uh, Gothenburg. Yeah. 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 yeah, one of those countries. Yeah. But um, well, as you said, what it under? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mm. uh, it, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of funny, you know? But anyway, we, we'll have to dig deeper into that. You know, just kind of throwing it out there. Yeah, well, I mean, it's November. And it's going to be a November to remember. And you know what's coming up this November? The world sport, I mean, the biggest sporting event in the world will yeah. start on November 20th? 20th and last through to December 18th. And I'm talking about the World Cup of football. I mean, what to expect? What to expect, Dale? We yeah. have our brackets. Last week we gave you our rundown, but this week, for the next 20 or so minutes, we'll go dig deep into our predictions for the World Cup. To me, it's kind of a bit still too early because I have to look on the injuries and see who's going to be in. Yes. A lot of injuries will that, play that, a that was pivotal one the, role. Yeah, that was one of the points and, Peter was making a while ago. Yeah. Injuries yeah the, the these guys playing a lot of football. And I guess injuries are part of the sport. Every World Cup, we have injured players. So, yeah. I mean, we have to start from the defending champions. And with France, they have a lot of key players that will be missed. If not missed, just coming off injury. I mean, Varian, mm-hmm. if he makes it fit for the World Cup, he'll be not much ready, yeah. seeing that he's coming off an injury. Pogba is definitely out. Kante is definitely out. And that's the heart, the middle. That's the heart of the team, right? The there. heart of the team right there. And then for the defense, Varian is one of the better defenders they have. Mm-hmm. One thing with France, though, they have a deep squad. And... They have a favorable group, although Denmark is a tricky team, and to me, that's a dark horse team. That's your, that's one of your teams. Yeah, but the grouping and the seeding, they're 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 on a roller coaster ride to meet Argentina in the next round. Mm-hmm. So the loser of that group will meet Argentina in the next round. But for France, they should make it out the group, and I bid them to top their group, hopefully, to avoid Argentina. <laughs> I don't want Argentina and France playing until they meet in the final, but that will be a tricky matchup. And I've never seen a World Cup without 
mishaps upsets. without upsets. Yeah. So the mishaps being injured and so on forth, even during the tournament and upsets as in Cinderella stories, that's what makes sports sports and so dramatic. You can have a banker and hey, to me, Serbia can go deep in the tournament. Serbia. Serbia to me has a good core unit. And if they play right, and I mean, they, it's a still a tough group to play Switzerland and come out with Brazil. I mean, Brazil group isn't as easy and straightforward. So we move from the favorites, France and Brazil now, to one of your favorites, England. Yes. I don't know how you have England as a favorite. And England has injured. Ben Chilwell, ben Chilwell is injured. Reese James is injured. I mean, two good wing backs, but... They have a deep enough squad, I think, to, to survive one of the easiest groups, I feel, which is USA, Wales, and Iran. Yeah. Uh, but, and then England tops that group. They have a favorable... Huh? That's, that's, that's one of the reasons why I'm going with England. And then not just, favorable. Yeah, because uh, the, the draw, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it, the draw can work in your favor, and sometimes it can work not in your favor. But mm. I think England have a, can have a cakewalk. No. To, to, to the to the semi final round where then they'll have to really that's, play that's provided if all the groups go according. According, according. What if Netherlands finish second in their group? Well, yeah, that, that's another thing. Yeah. Well, so, what's your what's your take on this thing? Because it, it seems as if one of the group is not finalized yet. With Tunisia, um, might be banned from the World Cup. I think they are still being. They are yeah. still being. Yeah. Uh, I see. I hear Nigeria mm. want the place, and I also hear Everybody Italy. Everybody wants. <laughs> <laughs> Your team Italy yeah, going off as, at, as well. I think the groups will stay as. Yeah. So they, they okay. Uh, as is. Uh, like the latest go. news out there, you know, Tunisia, they they're, they're trying to get them. Well, I know some countries want them out. Some countries, even Iran. Yeah, Iran. Even want even, Iran. even even a problem with Iran, you know, the couple of the countries asking um if they can ban Iran as well because of. The role that they played um, in the invasion of the country. Yeah. Um, well, let and us helping arms with, with Russia. With Russia. Yeah, and you know, FIFA is all about equality and yeah. no discrimination, uh, even the most sports. So I think it's too late and they'll still leave, be in. We'll, we'll leave, it, <laughs> leave it as is. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that because the team played for the space, you know. Uh, country have some internal issues yeah we, we know how what what the stands on that you know fifa don't want government interfering into football activities but yeah, but you know you can't stop that <laughs> you know these things happen still do happen you know i, all the I think all the teams stay as is all the groups stay as is and yeah i mean i think it will be a wonderful workup i just hope no more injury well this is the last you said this is the last week of um We'll have the international break, break, coming, break up. coming up. Yeah, now. we swear Jamaica will even play Cameroon. But um, tell us why England, sir? No, the favor. They have a good draw. I think it's all about the, mm. the draw for England. And there's something about England this year. And I just think it's destiny. You know, I just think it's it's time. It is time. Yeah. And I say it's coming home. Do it for the Queen. Yes, man. Yes, 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 yes. I think England have no chance. I think England will even struggle. The I think they will well take the group. Euros. Um, yeah, I, I think um, I, I'm definitely going with England for this. So you don't think? I would love, I to, see, I would love, to, I would love to see Brazil, you know, because is is, that's my second um, team here. I'd also love to see Brazil, but I know Brazil, Brazil to me, you know, whenever you see all these stars on paper, somehow them always let you down. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about stars, it's about the unit, you know. And I think Brazil is, is just too many stars. Too many players playing in the same position as yes, well. Yes, yes. I think that so that's will, my concern yeah. for Brazil. Yeah. You know, who I, plays left, who plays right? You know, we have Rafinha, you have Anthony, you have... And how, about, and how about this factor, kid? You, you, you know that a man can replace you. You're going out there, you're trying, you're, you're probably overdoing it on the field. You know, you know what I mean? Just because you want to, you know, you want to hold your spot, not playing as a team and playing more as an individual. I mm. think that can hurt Brazil. Mm. You know, the human factor. But Brazil, well. Brazil is in good form and farm is, is farm. Farm is farm. Farm Brazil is one of the best informed teams right now going into World Cup and along with Argentina. People say they have a deep squad, but to me, I don't see them having a deep squad, oh. especially defense. And even defensive midfield. I yeah. don't see Brazil. They have experienced players. They, they have, have attacking players, you say. But mostly attacking mostly players. Mostly attacking. Yeah, but that's Brazil. That's always Brazil. 
But yeah, they will be led by Neymar. Everybody will say Neymar has to come out and show this. You workout. really think Neymar can lead that team? Like but Neymar looks like he's matured and Ma- he's in he's good a mature form. Player now. And he's in good form at PSG. And I mean, Learn everybody wants to work up. And Brazil, it's passion. It's for football. It's it's. I mean, hey. Well, let's let's see if he can stay mm. upright. You know, that that's mm. his problem. Um, but I don't see Brazil winning. I don't see England winning. Well, Worse, don't see England winning. Yeah, no, you up. guys won't see England winning anything. But I see, I see Argentina <laughs> going all the way. Argentina is a team that, from even last year, a lot of people were talking about Argentina. But yeah. the ver- they are maybe the most versatile team in the competition yes. in regards to the style of play. They can change yeah. from attacking to defensive, and, uh, and they have the good. The that's goal, the key, the, the, that's the, key factor. Or the goal, the, goal, Messi, the Messi. greatest of all time. And he's on form right now for PSG. Messi's yeah. playing marvelous. The only player in all the top five leagues with over 10 goals and 10 assists. So, and Messi is, is, is just waiting for his time. And this will be his last World Cup. Yeah. So, I mean, injuries will play a part, but I hope Di Maria's fit. Dybala is out for the World Cup a year. <coughs> but. The Mar- yeah. the Maria don't have an injury as well. Yeah, the Maria is injured, but he's not, he's questionable. Questionable for questionable the for the World World Cup. I but think he'll he'll I think wrap up his leg and, and go there. See I think without play. without the Maria, I don't I don't think Argentina will win. Yeah. I think he has to play to take some of the uh, yeah. take some of the attention off from yeah, off, off I, from Argentina. Other players, Lartu Lartu Martinez, have, yeah. A, yeah. have some decent players. Yeah, yeah. yeah. hungry yeah. players, young players. Young. They have a good defensive player in Lisandro Martinez. He's one of the best defenders in EPL and for Manchester United right now. And the little sharp man he, he play like a, a mad dog. Yeah. And I mean to have a solid person around the back who's also a, like a leader in the team. And we see where Argentina is coming off winning the Copa. And I said in good form, I mean, I can't tell us in Argentina lost a match with a friendly or yeah. in competition. And that says a lot. So when you talk about farm, the inform teams are Brazil, Argentina, France, not so, Belgium, not so, Netherlands, Germany, not so, but Germany is a tournament team. Nobody. Who has the least amount of injury right now? Who? Which team is is the the, the healthiest team right now? Argentina. Every team has has somebody that is banged up. But in terms of the value of the person that is injured, well, we know France, Mm. the value of Kante and and, and I would say. France is the most banged up team. Who's the least banged up team would be probably Brazil. Brazil. Probably Brazil. Bra- Brazil. Probably Brazil. The healthiest team yeah, in the competition. So Brazil. That's a, also a factor. But with, with these three weeks coming up, I mean, this, they're playing a lot of football in training. Things do happen, but everybody's gearing up and wants to work up. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, the I world think, is I, tough. I, I think these guys should, should, should just rest. No, I know that they're gonna play a couple of matches more. I think these guys should just call it a day and rest. It's just we have two weeks away, two weeks away from the World Cup. Um, mm-hmm. and, norm- and normally you get like a month off mm-hmm. when you have the World Cup in June and mm-hmm. and and, um, and July. So I think yeah. these guys should just just, just rest. No matter when you keep the World Cup, we want to watch the World Cup. Yeah, to me, World Cup should have probably played every two years. <laughs> I mean, to wait I four want years. To, I want to see the best of the best out there. I don't mm-hmm. want no. I don't so want you're, no you're more with, injuries. You're with with um. Peter's theory of forming a team of the players that best players that no, don't make no, it to the record. No, no. <laughs> yeah, hell no. <laughs> yeah. No, no. But yeah. Because we have some top players for, for some countries that not making the World Cup and we'll get some rest. You see Holland being injured and missing a couple of matches, coming off the bench and scoring a 95th minute penalty. Can't stop scoring. But to stick on World Cup, Portugal. I know I saw something on the internet where super c- computer plugged in the World Cup draw. Yeah. And based on whatever variations, form, players, numbers. Like the octopus the, again, man. The, Yeah, the supercomputer <laughs> plugged in the numbers. Yeah, yeah. And you know who they had in the final? Ronaldo team. Argentina versus Portugal. What? Messi versus Ronaldo. What? <laughs> it sounds like a fairy tale. Yeah. The two, one of, two greatest players of this generation to meet in the 20, what year is it? 2022? Yeah. 2022 World Cup final. Messi versus Ronaldo. A lot of people would wow. love to see that. Later. A lot of people. Well, would imagine that. the TV yeah. views. And you know, the argument is that Ronaldo is better. Messi yeah. is better. You know, that's a big argument. Yeah. Yeah, man, you can't imagine yeah, man, that. Messi winning that World Cup. 
over Cristiano Ronaldo. Better, can you imagine Ronaldo, Ronaldo winning that World winning Cup? Winning that World Cup. I can't talk to no CR7 fans. <laughs> They, yeah. You can't tell him nothing. That man must be the goat. Even, and it's over at age 37 and, you know, this and no you, that. You, you know why a lot of these people like Ronaldo more? They think Ronaldo have I that. I wouldn't that, say that, a lot I, of these people. Not, not a, not well, a lot. I mean, yeah. the ones the who like CR7, yeah. the ones who like CR7, right? Yeah. It, it, it's more about the, 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 the body language and the, and the fight, the aggression that he shows on the pitch. Yeah. And sometimes I think that Messi is a little bit too laid back. Yeah. Well, actually, it's because he's smooth. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, smooth it's, criminal. So a lot of people will say, yeah. oh boy, if I want to win a match, I want a match, I'm going with CR. Mm. You know, if I just mm. want to, you know, because of the, the whole attitude. The, the determination. Mind, the, the determination. Mm. And this in body language, mm. it reminds me of Maradona. Mm. In, a, in a sense, yeah, you know, like Maradona a, is like a bulldog. Yeah, like you know what I mean? Dog, so yeah. that's, that's one of Pitbull. the things that you, you always hear them talk about. Why oh, Messi, when, when the time <laughs> gets tough, Messi does. You know, just mm. run the hide, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run, r- right, Ronaldo would demand the ball and, and try to do it by himself, you know? But remember, kind of... Messi go work up for us. Exactly. Into no, 14. That, that, losing the extra time. Yeah, that's their argument. That's their argument, you know? But I, mm. I think Messi is I don't... the best of football. Oh, football. definitely. I, I can't see how CR7 is He's better. in the conversation. He's in the conversation, but I don't see how CR7 is better than Messi. Um, that's that's my that's okay, okay, okay. just like how I can't see how LeBron is better than Michael Jordan. Yeah, um, I can't see it, but hey, people are entitled to their opinions. And I mean, pound everybody for pound, has when you look at skill sets, when you look at everything, you have to break it Messi, down. Messi is, is, is a better player. That's why we are here talking about sports, yeah, yes, <laughs> <Not yes. them. laughs> yeah. But everybody's entitled to their opinion, everybody has their player. Everybody can't have the same player, so it's it's, it's good. Yeah. and debates were made to be had, so Messi's. The goat. Yeah. And if he wins his World Cup, it only can add to his legacy. If he doesn't win the World Cup, he's still the goat. Okay. But I sure hope Argentina has a deep run. He plays good. I mean, scores a lot of goals, has a lot of assists. We want, we want to, to see those teams battle. Just like I, I don't know how, I don't, I don't see how Kian can confidently, I'm a Messi fan, declare Messi to be the goat. And have you really looked at the influence Arge, um, Diego Maradona? And on football, Diego is I, mine. in other words, when Diego Maradona came on a football field, sometimes there are not even two other recognized players on that team. Same with Napoli, mm-hmm. same with Argentina, mm-hmm. and Maradona made that difference. You, you heard me talk about LeBron, mm-hmm. the, the difference he made by just appearing. I don't see Messi doing that. Messi works with a team. Mm-hmm. And has moments of brilliance, technical brilliance, two salad on a pile and, and put the ball in a goal. No, and, mm-hmm. and by the way, Messi been scoring great goals mm-hmm. recently with PSG. Yeah. PSG, that front line working really, really mm-hmm. great. However, in terms of a match winner, Ronaldo is seen to be a match winner. Mm-hmm. He, a match can turn on an individual thing from thing there. Mm-hmm. But the funny thing is, Maradona was both of those things. Yes, Maradona would show you that artistry of running past seven guys and put the ball in the net, but at the same time, Ma- Maradona, yeah, yeah. So I think Maradona was a combination of the artist I and and the, and the the power forward. The that they're, Ronaldo they're combining is, yeah. the eye test with numbers. If you go to numbers, yeah, by itself, yes, Messi and his half here is worse here, has better numbers than Maradona and his best here. No, that I, we don't in, look at football in scoring way. goals, in assists, in, in winning championships, yeah, in whatever you assess it as. The impact on the field, Messi's off here is probably equal to Maradona's best here. Not to say it's the same thing. How many World Cups, uh, the, the, how many World one. Cups, uh, I, um, thing they have one, Maradona have what two, one, two, one, 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 for Argentina, yeah, and Margotti scored a individual. For me, when you make goal. when you make the movie, the greatest mm. of all time. Mm. In in other words, Michael Jordan was acknowledged to be a great basketball. Mm. Because of the same thing, you but he about became the greatest of too. all time mm. when he had those rings, those mm. those trophies. Mm. And I don't see Messi with the trophy. Yet. But the thing with the thing, no, with the, my, this chance you're when, when, which, when we sports, yes, Michael Jordan plays every year. What the NBA? Yes, you're singing Messi to. 
Oh, yes, I'm World Cup. Only a few every World four Cups. Years, every four years. Yeah. If you look at it's not an even comparison. It's not an even But at the same time, and, and when, the movie, made, when we make the movie mm. about the greatest football of all time, yeah. it has to end with a World Cup trophy. Because yeah, you that is the pinnacle of the sport. But you yeah, disagree? It George Ware, George Ware, and you say be and, uh, and George Best. Mm. Great ballers, don't. Yeah, man. But they cannot be the greatest because they they they, they So didn't. why is why is Maradona the greatest and the only one one? No, I'm not what saying about the, the greatest, players? No. What I about the players that won more than one? I think King Pele is the greatest. Because he won those World Cups. And not just that, but and what I see a bunch the, of sailors and unprofessional doing, people. Well, I don't know about it. What I see <laughs> Pele do in real football, mm. which which is to, to sell other man and sell them again and score with the left foot, score the right foot, score with the header. Score with it with it with it with the dummy, all kind of thing. Pele was technically so far above them, and the, the, the players he and, and the Ziggy and, <laughs> and all this kind of thing. <laughs> so, you have yeah. Pele as the goat, then, uh, yes, unfortunately, mm. I do have Pele as the goat, mm. but I have Mar- Mardana as also right up there. Mm. I think Messi and Ronaldo came in a period mm. which allowed them to rack up some serious numbers, but um, greatness, greatness requires a great stage. Uh, Pele number three still. Messi and Maradona is one A and one B. You need to go watch some, <laughs> some uh, One A and one against those <laughs> sailors and those tailors <laughs> <laughs> and those the, uh, New York Cosmos and scoring all those bunch of goals against. Mm, we have Messi. to agree that, that, no, Pele, is, that Pele, Pele was teaching, was schooling people when he was playing yeah, football. Schooling some he, he was schooling them. Messi is schooling people that play professionally, mm. fitter, stronger, more physical people, and it's like a video game. Prime Messi is probably. The best player across all sports I've ever seen. Great He's athletes need technical there. skill. Prime uh, Messi is yeah, but, such an art to watch. Whether you like football or not. Yeah, but I love if watching him Messi too. Is going to sh- yeah, but great ballers need need for the more than have technical ability. Mm. They need to fight. Yeah, and, right. and 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 no, what I'm saying. Mm. The, you see that fight that Ronaldo have? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a bit more more fire, more belly than Messi have. Messi just He's like more drama Messi queen. is an artist. No, Messi, Messi, Messi is a ball fire. artist. But Messi Ronaldo, Ronaldo is a bit of an artist, but more of a fighter. Mm-hmm. More, of a more of a queen. will. Yeah, we'll call it no, what he will. Dramatic. He's like a batsman. He's a, like a batsman who scores by just hitting sixes, mm-hmm. as opposed to Brand Lara glancing balls all over the place and showing great technical ability. Oh, that would be Messi. Yes, I see. Yeah, I see Messi as yeah. a as an yeah. artist. A, a young as a artist, ball artist. Yeah. Yeah, and you I don't do. see Messi diving. That's why I like Maradona doing it. You don't see Messi yeah. diving. Maradona was both of those things. He was Messi a combination of both. Messi is both of them. <laughs> Messi has I, I that fight. Messi. Messi has that fight. I need to, sh- you mm. need to show me a match where Messi does yeah, that. Yeah, man. All that classic I mean, showing grit. Messi bleeding. Messi. I've never seen Messi. I've never seen Messi. Go like this and I'll nudge a man and... What? Show a man and T- yeah, take on a man. Yeah, a man. Hey, I've never seen it. Sorry, for it's saying. always nice. Do you remember the phone lines are open? I need so much to call you and, and tell these guys about Messi. Somebody that watches the football week in, week out. You've never yeah. seen Messi do what? You've never seen me. They say, like, you say Maradona and Messi get kicked down and, and, and go some hole of a man and, and push a man and yeah, and bounce. And I, I want I, let me ask you a question Have you ever watched a match in which? Uh, Diego Maradona was a non show in the match, never uh, me neither. Even when him over you never watched Diego never. Maradona match, he wasn't on TV. <laughs> I, I, watched, I watched him, I watched no, him. They, they used to carry Italian, the they used to carry Italian. I'm, t- I'm telling you, we discovered Italian league when Maradona went there. That's when I first started watching Italian league, and almost any Jamaican will Apparently. tell you when 1988. We're back then, yeah, man. We had Italian, we had Syria, and what one was station TVJ? I don't know, but we mm-hmm. had it. Yeah, and I, kid, back then I had a satellite dish. But I'm not asking you, I'm telling you that I started not to watch no, no, Napoli no. when Maradona went there. No, no, no. Yeah. no, no. Yeah, man. And I'm sure you probably watched one and two Maradona matches. What did he do at Napoli still in history? What did he do at Napoli? The man carried the money from a bottom league yeah. side and, and bring them. No, no, they were on the table side. Well, 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 yeah, same thing, same thing. But he did great. And he won the league against probably one of the best sides ever with AC Milan. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And he led Napoli to how many titles? It's two? I don't know. One, one. I don't know. I don't know. One, I don't know. One, so, but one, one. that was at the best league in the world. And the best players in the world played in that league. And Maradona topped them all and won that title. And that, to me, is probably not equivalent to a work, winning a World Cup, but just a tier below yes, what man. he did. Because yeah. the big players, every big player in the world, Isn't you name it league? from Rijkaard <clears> to... That league, was it, that league was the strongest so, league. Um, that probably was the strongest, strongest league. league. And yeah. The Napoli team he had didn't have 
lavish stars like the other teams. Mm. So like for them place. and to win yeah. a league yeah, man. is a very tough thing to do. It's tougher than winning a tournament because you have to play 38 games home and away mm. and it's a wave throughout the whole season. We are tournament, you know, you can have a Cinderella run. It's still tough, but to me it's tougher to win a league. So winning that title in, in, in the in 80s is, yeah, is, is... He's like a god down here. <coughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah of man. course. Yeah, man. Of Maradona course. Is, is no, like... Maradona and Messi is one in one. I, I don't have any <laughs> argument if you say Maradona is the greatest. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, it's, it's down to opinions. You can't tell me that CR7 is the greatest. No, <laughs> I don't think CR is not in the conversation. I don't though. think, I don't think so either. Yeah. I think he's, he's a match he's, winner though, but he's, he's, he's not in the eight. Top eight, probably yeah. top six. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you yeah. put him so far up. Huh? Yeah, man, he, on the base of goals. Yeah, he's, oh. he's, he's, he's probably he's, he's the he's, he's, he's a goal he's a goal scorer of all time. All right, CR seven are, are the real R nine. R nine. I I'm going with R nine, but obviously CR seven will get the net because of his longevity. Yeah, R nine wasn't there that long, you know. No, R nine injuries, no. injuries and weight gain. Injuries yeah, mushroom. it's the same thing, I suppose. Brazilian Ronaldo. Yes, prime. Prime R9? CR is not in his no, league. No, he was a phenomenon. Uh, Don't get me wrong. That's his yeah, league. He's he's a, yeah, league. hold on, hold on. A, yeah. Hey, what's that, man? <laughs> CR not in this man league, man. Indeed. He, he was a bulldog, but he had a yeah, short, reasonably touch. short career. Yeah. Reasonably, yeah. reasonably short career. But he is not done to Prime now for one year. And say so one year, who would you pick? Prime CR or Prime R9? I'd have picked Prime Ronaldo. Oh, you <laughs> both. I'd have picked Brazil Ronaldo. I would. Who wouldn't? I would. He has one of the I best would. seasons ever. In, yes, I would in, pick Brazil, Ronaldo. Speed, I would. Touch, football for agreed, Barcelona, agreed. everything, but everything. Uh, that, yeah. man, that, that man played for Barcelona and Real Madrid, two rivals. Inter Milan and AC Milan, two rivals. All right, so make could do it then. Well on, well on, well on. Well on. Well on. So make could do the pick then. Who would you pick, Ronaldinho or Messi? Oh, I'm not picking nobody over Messi. You're a madman. I'm not Ronaldinho at his best. Hold on. Ronaldinho I'm at his best. This one. I'm not picking I, nobody I, I, over I, Messi. I, I, I thought Ronaldinho was just a, a, a showman. No, he was a great man. No, he was a great man. He could no. do, that man could accomplish yeah, man. anything yeah, on the football yeah, yeah. field. Anybody else, you know. Yeah. But for a match, for, for winning, no, I'm not going with him. I'm really? going with Messi. No, man. No, sir. No, man. It remind, it remind so me we, you're picking Ronaldinho over CR? Prime Ronaldinho over Prime CR? This is a season, you know. For one, one season. season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm picking Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho over Yes, there. yes. I would. That's tough. I would. Be, be, remember, at the end of the it's day, close. at the end of the day, we have to watch this ball game, you know. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So who's you the, understand why? Hold on. Hold on. Entertainment <laughs> factor you're going with. Football is entertaining. <laughs> you yeah, understand? So Hold on. I just <laughs> told you about Anthony Spin, right? Mm, yeah. I picking that man for watching him on the field, you know. Mm. I've been telling you about Anthony Football is fun. Football got to be fun. Of course, of course. And so Ronaldinho makes my team. As does Neymar. Dina is legit. No man, he's a magician, man. Yeah, man. He's legit, but mm. I am not picking nobody over Prime Messi. In no sport. The closest person up is Michael Jordan. You know, I'm picking Prime Michael Jordan. Mm. But yeah. when it comes to a sport, first up, it would, with lawn tennis, I'd be like, eh. Some people say Joker, some people say Nadal, some people say Federer. All across all sports in their prime, I, I'm not picking nobody over Prime Messi. First pick, Prime Messi. Our all, God. Right. all sports, all, all sports. All sports. All, any sports. athlete. Any athlete, Prime Messi. I'm picking Mike Tyson. No, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm going to change it. I'm a, this is the big man. Prime Bolt. Sorry. Mike Tyson. Prime Bolt. Bolt? Prime no, Bolt. No, Bolt no, cannot be beaten. No. Prime Bolt is running 9-4. We, we've never so seen well it. Well on, well on. So you have so one prime athlete. Prime Messi. Wait, you have that, one athlete. You're crossing our sports. Yeah. Prime Bolt. Oh. Prime Bolt is unbeatable. 9.58. You see, don't worry. You can't say Messi. You compare Messi and Maradona. We have this debate. Mm. And we compare Jordan with Kobe or Jordan with Lebron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More no, no, no. Tyson. We're picking. We're, we're picking. <laughs> we're picking. <laughs> and nobody in no Bolt, class. You know, but Bolt has got a gift. Man. Bolt is All not. Right, so, just a gift. So that's uh, why, he, he that's why we have to look at Bolt. Oh, you can't call Bolt. <laughs> so can you you can't Bolt no, That's why we have to look for well, longevity. That's why we're putting... Prime and the and Prime Sierra, we have contact. In other words, you know, you have but a Federer. Bolt. You have a choice of Federer, right? You have a choice of Tiger Woods. You have a choice of Tyson, Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. And you pick Bolt as, as the greatest. You have a choice of Muhammad Ali. And you pick Bolt. I don't agree with you. Bolt is a Jamaican. I'm We're picking. proud of him. <laughs> <laughs> Bolt, That's about it. Bolt is with his contemporaries on another level. True. Not even oh, close. you're talking about no. that separation. Yeah, the separation. Not even close. In that case, we'd have to pick one of the pole vault of them. 
Because when you'd have to pick Sergey Booker, you'd have to pick Sergey Booker. Sports is not sports and, and entertainment. Yeah. So we could have taken it to a could have picked Marlon. You know what I mean? Mm. We could pick one of those guys. Yeah, that's a Pambo. tough one, though. You know, let's research that. Who is the most dominant athlete for a single year of all time? It got to be yeah. Tiger Woods but or Michael Jordan. But Mike Tyson. Got to be Tiger Woods but, but or Michael Mike Jordan. Mike Tyson was a beast, you know? Yeah. Fighting all 15 prime, fights when a he year. Really yes. Yes. After when fighting even 15 fights I mean, if you look on Ronda Rosie, before Ronda Rosie lose in UFC, yes. no, before she lost, Ronda Rosie looked pretty unbeatable, you know? What was the last thing in the sports commentary? What were you saying? I, I'm trying to remember now. What were we mm. talking about? No, um, about um, what, Emma Raducanu, Serena Williams, yeah. and yeah, yeah. the female about, sports. Yeah, and all yeah. that. We were talking so we're going to leave them out. We're going to leave them out. <laughs> so you're going to leave uh, Ronda Rose out? We're going to leave Ronda Rose out of this. But, you know, for, um, it's, it's good that uh, the Australian Open um, will allow Joker to, to, to play um, come, come January. The play is free up. Yes, yeah. that's good. That's good for Except you. Except for the USA. Yeah, for the no, no, no. Except for the USA. Yes, sir. The USA is not going to allow uh, Mr. Djokovic to play in time. In time, in time, in time I suppose. Time. But, but, um, but I'm happy to see that he, he will get a chance now to, to, um, to get that. I'm probably claim his place in the pantheon of, yeah, man, of I'm, camp. I'm, he's I'm already happy. there. He no, 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 no. He he's got to though, erase but, that, but good, that another record, in my opinion. He might, he might get no, three but, more slams. But, but this is what and he will get it. He will get three more slams. But Kane, I not give him it until he get the three slams. The Joker? Not getting Come it. Come on, joke up. God be getting the tree slams. Joke up there. But it's good news, though. Joke on legend in eh? tennis. It's good news. Legend in yes. tennis. Good news. We want to see him back in the Joker in, in the goat debate in tennis. He has to be up there. He's in the goat debate. And a yeah. lot of people have him as the goat. Three slams. Probably even majority of the people as Joker as the goat. I gave Nadal only on the per on, on the basis of slams. We're just counting slams. Mm-hmm. But you see, you do numbers in one sport and then you do numbers and eye test in the next. You have to do the whole package in every sport, in everything. You have to be have a criteria in every sport and put it. Well, in. it's a good project, you know, to pick the greatest performer mm. of all times over, over, over a one year period. One year we, period. we will find that. But I think peak Mike Tyson was a pretty daunting thing. Mike team. Tyson is. I remember good. Mike Tyson going against Alex the Destroyer. And, and even he so. Punch one punch and the man retire. Even so. Just, Who was Mike Tyson really fighting? Tell me, you name it five top fighters. Michael he Tyson, fought five, Larry five Holmes. In prime, in he fought Burbick was 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 a, was was a champion at the None time. None of those fighters he in the top ten, top one crusher. All time. Ta- Mike Tyson fought everybody during that. Yeah, time. but those nobody some, was able to uh, dodge. Most him. of them were scrubs. Larry Holmes was 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 the, was the best heavyweight boxer. Yeah, a couple of them were good. Larry Holmes destroyed Muhammad. Co- and, 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 and as did Spinks. Time, and, 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 and Mike Tyson beat Spinks as well. And none of those fighters in the top probably 50 best ever ways. No, no, let, no, let, no, no. Let, give let, give let Tyson not. his due. No, no I'm not Mike, saying no. Mike Tyson, you, you, prime Mike Tyson. Yes. Nobody wants to fight Mike Tyson. Exactly, yes. Not even Julius Caesar back in the day. All those great <laughs> conquerors. <laughs> yes. Nobody wants to see Mike Tyson coming at them. No. Genghis Khan. Mike Tyson was a fearsome Mike fearsome Tyson prospect. is a yes. beast. Well, we, but we, we didn't even get to touch on with NBA news, but... Oh, the Kyrie we, and all of that. But we, Kyrie we, will make, we will wait. Yeah, but that Kyrie thing, um, is it sports really? Is it oh, sports? Uh, what, what, what is the sports Nike. part of the Kyrie thing? Let, explain that to me. Well, what it is, um, he suspended for, for five, five games. games. For comments. He yeah, made. yeah, but is it sports? When Kanye West um, makes these statements, is it music? Kanye West is known for music. <laughs> See? Well, Kanye I, was Ka- the richest black man in, in North America. Was he really rich though? Huh? When your wealth is based on a contract you have and on a stock that you hold and a mm. thing that, you the, know, I mean, pretty soon Elon Musk know. will not be the richest man in the world. Yeah, but he's all that prediction from me. But he's definitely <laughs> wealthy. Elon Musk will not be the richest man in the world he's for much definitely longer. He's wealthy, but I mean, with the Kyrie thing, it's even tough because he lost his contract now with Nike. Parted ways. Yeah, this but, new Kyrie age who is not coming out now. I mean, get, getting suspended five games with no pay. But why? Imagine, what? What? What is the purpose the, for him saying this? The, what he said, though. What, he just what, shared his views. No, just is that, he, that he those are his views? A, no, was just, just post a link. He never I know. Said, I know. Didn't say anything. Mm. And me, there's what draw him to but, say but, something. But why do we need to hear from Kyrie about his views about and, race? And, 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 and my, and my thing is why. What, 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 the man posts a link. Yes, it, it had some some hate thing in it or whatever the mm-hmm. movie or whatever yeah. the thing is. But I'm saying how how them not attacking Amazon. Is them is that's the platform that okay. that shows that shows the shows that, that, everything. That hosted, yeah, that hosted. Yeah, you know I mean, mean, but Carrie, um, 
To me, to me, if you're an athlete, you're a basketballer. I mean, no one say shut up and just dribble, right? I'm not. I'm not. That's not the side I'm taking. But I'm saying that you have to be careful that you don't depart too far from what you came there for, and and don't don't abuse your platform. Uh, so similarly, if if, uh, uh, um, if Kanye is making good beats and he's also good fashion choices, the water boots mm. is really something else. You see the boots, <laughs> uh, um, you know. Yeah. Then then let him stay in that lane. When, yeah, I, I agree. What, what I'm I, saying, I don't mean to, carry his dominant, mm, but I, I, I'm I need to saying look deeper that into what really went just, down with the carry thing. And next put, week, post break it down more. If you mm. post, if you post mm. it. And then ask your question. You, you, you just you just answer it in a in a, in a way that don't yeah, yeah. But if problems. you're the world best lawn tennis player, yeah, stay away from the vaccine controversy. Talk about lawn tennis a lot, and yeah. hold your mm. non tennis views to your non tennis friends and so on. That's all. That's all I'm yes, saying. Yes. Then Muhammad Ali wouldn't be Muhammad Ali if he just stick to boxing and spoke about. Boxing. The problem is that it it it, it, it takes it, away from it was going to from, no in Muhammad's case, mm-hmm. it was going to take him away from, from boxing, boxing mm-hmm. because he was required to go in the draft and the, so he, he spoke his views. Uh, even that's a, different. Even, even after that, he spoke. When about I draw you and, out and talk what you want to talk, mm-hmm. but Muhammad Ali didn't go there seeking controversy. No, I'm not taking him go the seeking controversy. He, he no, he cha- love controversy. Man. No, I don't Muhammad think so. Oh, gosh. You know, this is why. Muhammad Ali wanted to be a, me, that you, figure. You, you know why? Movement. And Kyrie yeah. is just stating his views and what he feels. And his views are pretty screwed up and it's gotten him in trouble. I mean, yeah. hey, he has his opinion. Like flat MJ. earth. earth MJ yeah. stayed away from. MJ best was best example. A, MJ was just a basketball player. Best example. Some yeah, people yeah. see him as a sellout for that. Um, Being in the position he, and the people he influenced. Okay, you, MJ you know, should have done more. But you, you, you know this as an athlete. You have mm. tunnel vision. If yeah. you want to really perform. Mm. That's why I don't, really, that's why I don't really like LeBron with all of the mm. other fans. But there, there, there are pros and cons yeah. to being... Uh, even true. people saying Tom Brady need to retire. Let's, I'm saying there's pros and cons yeah. of being a Tom Brady. LeBron Tom Brady certainly is great. Le- LeBron has used this platform. Oh, yes. Yeah, and yeah. I'm going to say abuse, you know, but he's used this and platform. And he has shied away from it when... Times when step but up as well. responsibility. He has yeah. a responsibility. So, so, as a, mm. as a so, great so, man so, to speak. MJ, yeah. mm. I'll watch these guys perform on the court. Yes. Mm. You can see that these guys are all locked into, yeah. into to, to, to the crowd. They're professionals. Mm. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But yeah. Carrie and, 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 and all of these guys, I don't have no problem with them speaking out. You know, but yeah. it's going to take away from the game that we want. I think it's taken away from the it's game. It's going to take away him. from the, you on the court. And is yeah. he even playing? I hardly see him. He, he, he can't play. He's yes. suspended. Yeah. And plus, and even, even game, when he's playing, points, yes, he's playing his most game. subpar performance. Exactly. So he, I think it's affecting his on court performance. Of course, of course it is. Even before the whole vaccine controversy and all yeah. of that. So, I mean, sometimes it's best <laughs> to leave things unsaid. And sometimes you have to say things. True. So when because is that I, time? I, I side with him with mm-hmm. the vaccination thing. I know it's coming out that people is going to get it, 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 I it, side with him where if he feels that way and he honestly feels that way. Right. Just Kyrie was right. Yes. I mean, I'm just saying if, stance, but well, I if he feels the way he feels <laughs> and I disagree with it, yes. if he feels the way he feels, go ahead and say what you want. But gentlemen. Yeah. yeah. Well, what do you mean? The show. We are in overtime now. I mean, you know we have to wrap up the show now. Thanks to the Two of our interviewers, yes, interviewees, yes. I mean, Owen Hill, Owen CEO Hill. of Professional Football Jamaica Limited. Big things happening here in and Jamaica then, with the Premier League, Jamaican Premier League. And just and look then, out for it. And, and also I mean, the national head co- table tennis head coach of St. Lucia. I mean, yeah, Chris doing Wells. great things down there. And I mean, giving back to the sport that he played for so many years and, and loved. But I mean, it was a great show. Such a many topics. Who's next? I hear there's an upcoming DJ. DJ Chiggles. I hear him draw nothing there. So yes, big DJ viewers, again. stay on board for yeah, DJ Chiggles. Yeah, it's gonna be fire. It's gonna be. What kind amazing. of music is he playing? I mean, we're going to listen after this as well. <laughs> but we have to wrap up the show here and one look from the Primal Sports Six. You know, Primal is vital. See you next week, same time, same place. And thanks to all the viewers. And hey, keep it going. Spread the word. Tell a friend and I download mean, the app. Download the app and hey, Primal 4K out on Facebook. I mean, out on YouTube. Hey, just share and. One love from the Prima Sports 6. Peace out. Good guys.